Hello, everyone, and welcome in to another episode of Rising to the Occasion, a special one because we are bringing to you a preview of our own of UFC 300. It's going to be an amazing event. It's, it's one that I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. And what's crazy is that you look back at these last few events from 297 to 2, uh, really 299. I, don't, I didn't care too much for 298, but you talk about 297. Uh, up to 299 and then now 300 uh, 298 was still a good card too but overall these last few big time cards that we've gotten have been historical cards now we're getting one that is absolutely historical when we talk about everything that's going into this three different title matches uh, a bunch of legends guys and girls that are going to go down as legends in the UFC uh, I mean it's it's incredible when you look at the, the stacked up cards that we've gotten and now what we have here at first glance when we first had 300 released it was underwhelming but then I, it, I, I I took it in looked at it and realized what we have it ahead of us and it's much more exciting than I gave it credit for to begin with but before we get into it first mentioning our sponsors for this episode and that is SeatGeek as always we love SeatGeek we want you to love SeatGeek and the only way you can love SeatGeek is is if you go check them out, because whether you are a fan of any kind of live of, live events, whether it be sports or music or theater, even comedy or parking tickets, for goodness sakes, they've got everything. If it's a ticket that you need to purchase, SeatGeek has you covered, uh, because they've got everything, and it's such a seamless mobile experience. Uh, so if you download the SeatGeek app, that's the best way to use it. SeatGeek also allows you to buy and sell tickets in just a couple of taps. It doesn't get any simpler than the way that SeatGeek has it set up for you guys, and it gets even better because SeatGeek grades every ticket from red to green based on value. This helps you identify the best valued tickets immediately, makes it very easy to find the best seats that fit your budget. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop securely and with a complete peace of mind knowing that for one, your information is going to be safe and for two, you will know that your tickets will scan in at the door, at the gate, wherever it is that you're using them. It's absolutely amazing, and we love SeatGeek so much that we've teamed up with them to get you guys an amazing offer. Get you guys $20 off your next ticket purchase. All you have to do is go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app. Purchase those tickets by using the code R2TO. It's down there at the bottom of the screen, R2TO. Use that code at SeatGeek.com or the SeatGeek app and get $20 off your next purchase. SeatGeek, life is an event, and SeatGeek has your tickets. Let's get into the episode, but first, bringing in my co-host, Jeremy. Just got done golfing. You had the best round of your life. I don't want to spoil too much because we were able to record some, and hopefully we'll be able to get that out there to the people. How are you feeling after that great round of golf? I I truly am mind-boggled on how well I golfed today. It was definitely one of those times to where I don't know if, if just the camera came out and the, and the shine just came out in me or whatever the situation was, but we always love going to Hidden Acres. It's our, it's almost kind of like our home course than just outside of here to, in town in Sioux City, but it's definitely a fun course. Tricky holes, and it's always a fun course. But back to the episode, I'm doing pretty good, and I'm really looking forward to the UFC 300 for tomorrow night. Then, like Josh mentioned, we're giving it, giving you guys a little bit of our preview for UFC 300. Then I was on the same boat with Josh. I was kind of a little bit eh, like this is really the best you can do for UFC 300 being. Month, being Mr. Number 300, and you want to get all the, the big cards that you can for coming up at 300. But, Josh, after looking at the remainder of the fight cards and looking through everything, I, I took a little bit of time and scrolled through, and I thought, okay, I, I overlooked this really hard when I first looked at it. But we definitely do have a really good card up on hand. But, Josh, I know we got a lot to talk about, so let's cut to it, Chase. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's it's completely stacked. Uh, I'm I'm – really excited for this one. I think this is going to be a really fun one to watch. And I mean, just looking at everything that was put into thinking about how we can make this the best overall fight night. I think this is, this is a really fun one without a doubt. Yes. Uh, and I, I think, you know, Dana, Dana White is absolutely, I mean, we've talked about this for a long time. He's the best commissioner in the game and it's no, no doubt, uh, you know, that he is the best, uh, you know, just looking at, at everything that he does, He's 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 amazing, uh, and and he showed it by putting together a couple of really good cards and backing up from 299 how stacked that one was and how mm -hmm. amazing how exciting that entire card was. Yeah. Now we come up to this one, and somehow he was able to back it up with another great card. But we've got UFC 300. Before we get into the, the matchups, um, 
one thing I don't know if you saw, but in the press conferences, a, a uh, somebody in the media was asking Dana, you know, hey, these guys would like to have since this is a, this is a special event, they would like to have the the bonus, this the the fight bonus bumped up a little bit. And so, you know, he, he said, how much would, you know, would you be willing to, to bump it up? And Dana said, okay, how much am I bumping it up? And a bunch of guys were kind of joking with him. Hey, multiply it by three, you know, do all this. And so 150,000, somebody else said, no, 300,000, UFC 300. Dana said 300,000. All right. That's what it is. Wow. So he bumps it up, improving himself as the greatest commissioner in all of sports. You can't change my mind. That's go ahead awesome. and go ahead and try. You can't change my mind. That was awesome. Dana White is is amazing. So bumping up that 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 uh, bonus right there in front of everybody in the press conferences, and then of course you got all the fighters extremely excited. Oh, yeah. Now they've got something extra to fight for because this is coming from a fifty thousand dollar bonus payout to, to three hundred thousand. Wow. You don't have to fight for the rest of the year. No, if, if you hit that three hundred thousand, you can retire. Almost so for us. so all of the fighters extremely excited about this. Uh, and, and whoever ends up winning that 300000 is going to be extremely grateful. You can't argue with Dana White saying that no. he doesn't pay his, his fighters enough no. anymore after this. I, you know, it's, it's, you, you get paid what you put into it, and that's exactly how Dana has always ran the UFC. That's how it should be. Uh, back a while a while back, Ronda Rousey was questioned about, hey, you know, like other sports, the, the women aren't getting paid as much. You're the highest paid a UFC fighter at the time, UFC fighter in, in the history of the UFC, do you think other women ought to be, be getting paid more? And she said, I don't want to make this about, you know, women getting paid more. You should get paid what you bring in. I bring in an audience. That's why I get paid more mm-hmm. than other other women. And and that's exactly how it is. Not just for women, but just overall. Uh, go, and, go and put on a show and, and get paid more. I, I think Dana White does a pretty good job of making sure that those fighters who put something in and, and give him something, he gives that back in return. Uh, and, and obviously putting his money where his mouth is here. Dana White is definitely not afraid to put his money where his mouth is. I mean, you said it the best. Dana White is one of those guys to where if you give him crap, he's going to back it up and say, watch this, and he just did it. I mean, it's already one thing enough to see every fighter physically train, mentally, ability, and just the whole nine yards of what these UFC fighters are able to bring night in and night out. We've seen snippets and clips, and everybody has obviously via social media, on how much they put into training and dieting and everything for what they put on a card. But it's it's always those one things to where you get into that moment to where you're in a press conference or whatever the situation is. But to me, it, it doesn't necessarily matter – the money factors because you're going out there to put on a show for every fan that has paid the who knows what they're paying for whether it's traveling hotel fees and and all that hullabaloo you just go in there to prove the show to the fans that this is appreciation and saying thank you for coming out and watching us do what we do and it doesn't matter if it's just UFC it's any sport I mean Heck, me and Josh, we've made a trip up to Minneapolis last year, and we went and watched the Orlando Magic and Jonathan Isaac and play against Cat and Edward Zubman uh, up in Minneapolis. But that was definitely a fun trip. But, I mean, you can't you can't express how much more that this brings to every single fighter. And they're already going 110%, but now at this stake and bumping up that rate, I think they're going to be going about 200% at the bare minimum, if I yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, bumping bumping that ante just a little more definitely uh-huh. brings a lot more excitement to the fighters, which is going to bring more excitement into the octagon for the viewers. Without a doubt. So, yeah, he, he knows what he's doing when it when it comes to business. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll give them $300,000. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. And, uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. But... Let's go ahead and jump into it. Starting off with the early prelims, I want to kind of start off down there and kind of work our way through. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about in the early prelims. A bunch of guys who, you know, and, and girls who are, are great fighters, no doubt, and a lot of these guys ranked. Uh, that, that's what's crazy is that this is the early prelims. We're talking about the ones that hardly anyone really watches when it comes down to it. You know, you, you get you get less people viewing the early prelims. Then in the, in the prelims, you start to get some people viewing and, kind of getting everybody rolling in. By the time the main card comes around, which is stacked uh, in this one, that's when people are really tuning in. So for early prelims, I advise you tune in because these are some guys, you're not going to know their names as well, but some guys that I feel like the winners of these matches are going to be climbing up and making their name known to you. That's how crazy this this card is, is that these early prelims have some names on it that, that you'll be hearing. Uh, starting off, uh, J- Jalen Turner, uh, he's he's ranked number ten in the lightweight division, the men's men's lightweight division right now, uh, going against Renato 
Moicano. Uh, also a lot of difficult names in UFC, so bear with us. Uh, that's that's one fight going on. Uh, looks like uh, Jalen Turner, obviously the the favorite there. That's a name that I think you'll see more of if if you and you'll hear more of if he ends up winning this one uh, and moving forward. Uh, going on a women's fight, women's strawweight bout uh, between Jessica and- Andra- Andrade uh, and then Marina Rodriguez. This is another another one. This is a number four ranked Jessica uh, Andrade uh, against a number sixth ranked Marina Rodriguez. So that, that's this is early prelims we're talking about. Uh, now you go down. This is another this is another fight that you want might want to tune into. Uh, pretty early here in the early prelims. Bobby Green, who's ranked number 14 in the lightweight division, uh, going against Jim Miller. Jim Miller, he's an underdog for this one, but slightly an underdog. He's sitting at plus 150. If I had to give you some advice, maybe throw a little bit of cheddar on him at that plus 150. I like those odds. That's a name, Jim Miller. That's a name that you might hear quite a, quite a bit and, and start to rise in fame. Just throwing that out there for you. But Bobby Green, also a great fighter, ranked in the top 15 in the lightweight division. Uh, and then another another good one. Uh, so here's here's another one that su- surprises me with the odds. Um, so you've got uh, Davison, uh, and I don't know how to say his last name, uh, Figu- Figueredo. Um, he's number he's ranked number eight in the bantamweight division. Going against Cody Arbrandt, another name. Check check that out. Um, that's another name that I think you might be hearing more of. This is going to be a tough one. He's going against the ranked ranked eight in, in his division. But Cody Garbrandt, if he wins this one, sitting at plus two fifty, I kind of like those odds uh, to to win some extra money on. Th- this is an underdog that I, I would I would feel confident putting my money on. But it's all up in the air because it's fight night. Uh, you know, it's it's totally unpredictable. Early prelims, any any names really stand out to you in the early prelims? It's hard to pick out one just because all these prelim fights, they're all really, really good people to be fighting. But if I had to pick the one that's going to be outside of the Jalen Turner one, that's the one I'm most looking forward to. But if I had to pick a different one, I would honestly pick the Bobby Green fight. That one's yeah. going to be a really good one, I think, going against Jim Miller. Jim Miller is 37-17. to 17. He's definitely one of those guys to where he may have – he may be up there in the loss column a little bit, but look at the people that he's fought. He's fought some really big dogs. And even on the same side for Bobby Green, he's 31-15. and 15. I mean, both of these fighters are very technical, and they're they're not afraid to put their body out there. I mean, The reason why I bring up Jim Miller, too, and being a name that you might hear more of, is just the pure fact that he's been in it so long. Exactly. He's, 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 he's getting too old for this. You know, yeah. he's getting too old for this. So... I, I see him finding this is this is my time to get in here, get some big wins, and just leave. You know, and, and right now, what better way to do it than here at UFC 300 when Without when the this, the brights that the, the lights are very bright right now, and uh, you know you've got a chance. So uh, you know, looking back at the, at his last couple of, of fights, uh, you know, it, yeah, I mean he's 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 had he's had a lot of them. <laughs> he's yeah. had a lot of them. Uh, he's he's fought a lot, but uh, you know it's. It's definitely time for him to kick it into gear because he's getting too old for this, and he's he's looking to to kind of end the, this end chapter. chapter yeah. Um, so yeah, def, de- definitely one fight that I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think Jim Miller's trying to show something here, mm-hmm. uh, and who knows how much longer he's got too. That's the thing. I mean, you, you know, obviously as much as I do, you can only your body can withstand only so much for so long. I mean, you look at basketball players, for example. I mean. Everyone thinks basketball is so easy until the ice get on the court and start playing. Then, of course, even the same with football and quarterbacks and stuff like that. But going into UFC, I mean, this is a whole different animal, of course. I mean, you're trapped in the octagon and facing those five rounds. I mean, that's definitely something to where you want to just – it's going to be a lot of technicality is going to be the big thing and catch your opponent off guard and try and get that one little momentum slip and then try and go for the KO punch or the technical tap out. I mean, Jim Miller, he's definitely been, he's been a league for so long is what it feels like. I mean, and his, his last couple of fights too, a couple of really good wins. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's two fights ago winning by a, a KO, KO and the TKO in the, in the first, first round. And then uh, just after that submission in the third round, when you know third round, that's your last round to get it done. Exactly. He pulls out the win there. So yeah, that's that's definitely a name that I think I, I like. Uh, and then again, another one being Cody Garbrandt, his last fight win in that one. Uh, you know, and, and and seeing what he was able to do there. I think he had one 
get canceled, if I remember, uh, just a little while back. Was it from a weigh-in? Um, or what was it? I don't remember. I just oh. remember he had one canceled. Uh, and then, you know, fight before that ends up losing in the first round. But he's he's a name that I think if he's able to get himself on a win streak here, get himself a couple of wins in a row, that, that 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 he's he's a good fighter. I, I like the way that he fights. I think, he, I think he's going to be a fun one to watch. Without a doubt. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into the prelims. This is where we're starting to get into some bigger names. Prelims are, are where, you know, that usually you've got you've got up and comers in the prelims. You've got some guys that, hey, you're almost to the main card. You're not quite there. Or sometimes, hey, you're main card worthy. We just don't have enough room in the, this main card for you. And we've got the perfect timing for a fight for you. That's just what happens sometimes. Here we've got a bunch of guys and, 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 and ladies who are 100% worthy of a main card event. And... It's just so stacked that they're being pushed back into the prelims. Uh, starting off, uh, so you've got Sadiq Youssef against Diego Lopez. That's going to be a very fun fight. A couple of top, you know, almost top 15. Uh, I don't think Diego's ranked yet, but he, he looks good. Um, and he's actually the favorite, which is really shocking in this this matchup. That's going to be a fun one. you got the Brazilian going, in, going against the Nigerian. See what, what will happen there. Um, but then the one that I'm very excited for, uh, is Holly Holm, the legend herself, stepping back in it. She's getting old, but she's, she's still got that fight in her. She's still got that fight in her going against a very young and up-and-comer in Kayla Harrison. Uh, actually talking to Raquel Pennington, uh, we had her on the show, and, and whenever I had the chance to talk to her, she was talking about this fight. And, and Raquel was worried about the fact that if Kayla wins this one, which she is the favorite uh, in this fight, if Kayla wins this fight, that might boost her ahead of many fighters and possibly getting the title fight against Raquel Pennington. And, you know, I'm, I'm right there with Raquel. I don't like the idea that Kayla could jump over the top of many fighters just with this one fight, just because Holly Holm, yes, she's a legend, but Kayla hasn't gone through the ringer to, to prove herself. And Holly Holm is also towards the end of her career. It's not like this is the Holly Holm that came in here and, and was swinging those fists real heavy, being able to to beat big time opponents, uh, you know, and and seeing what she's been able to do in her past. This isn't the same Holly Holm, so you you might get kind of an overreaction if if Kayla Harrison is able to win this one. Nevertheless, this is going to be a very fun fight. When you talk about women's fights and and how exciting they can be, we've got a lot of great women fights. Uh, really? really, a couple of them that I'm thinking of this one, and then another one in Zhang Wei Li that we're going to see. Uh, here coming up, but Kayla Harrison sitting 16 and one in her record right now. She's looking really good. She's an up and comer, like I said. Um, but uh, her last fight was her debut in the UFC, mm-hmm. and she's catching eyes. She's starting to catch the attention uh, of a lot of the a lot of the viewers. And uh, if she wins this one, this is going to be a name that you see in contention for the belt, without a doubt. I mean, Kayla, she's. She's young. She's 33. I mean, it sounds a lot more for what she looks like. I mean, she's 33 years old. She looks really healthy in really great shape. I mean, looking at her compared to Holly Holmes, like you said, she's getting up there age. She's 42 years old now. I mean, you look at both of these fighters, and if you were to say the age, you're thinking there's no way in heck that's really how old they are. I mean, that just goes to show you how much blood, sweat, and tears that they put in in the determination for training. I mean – Holly Holm is definitely one of those one of those females that you don't want to catch up wrong. She, I'm morally favoring for Holly Holmes in this fight just because of the report card and how long she's been in the UFC. Well, and but, and excuse me too, I, I I think I said that backwards. UFC 300 is Kayla Harrison's debut. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I thought her last fight was a debut. Okay. Um, and and I I even wrote that down in my notes. Totally looked past it. Okay. So she she is a two time Olympic gold medalist um she's making her debut at 300 that's incredible can a, a, a ufc better. debut in a stacked prelims so i mean this is basically a main card for, for how, how stacked, stacked it is. is um making your ufc debut that's that's amazing right there Without a doubt. Uh, and so although she finds herself on the prelims remember this is a stacked prelims that's the only reason why she's down there when we get to the main card and list off the names there you'll understand why the certain names are down in the prelims like holly holm um but you know her her, her presence coming into the ufc and getting this debut man it's it's going to bring a lot of excitement and you're going to see her go against holly holm Ah man, look, looking at the way this is it's set tough. up, she she deserves to be the 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 favorite for sure. But right now, the last I checked, 
Uh, Kayla Harrison's minus 475 favorite. Wow. Holly Holm is the underdog by plus 340. That's crazy. That's that's crazy that's when, you, when you think of that. But she is this Olympic gold medalist, a lot of hype around her coming into the UFC. This is where we're going to see her truly shine and, and, and what she's actually made of. Uh, and so another fight you absolutely want to keep a hold, and keep your eyes on. Uh, another one, uh, the former champion himself, Aljamain Sterling, going against uh, uh, Calvin Qatar. So this one, Aljamain Sterling is a favorite, sitting there at minus 175, Qatar plus 145. Uh, I think this is where Aljamain Sterling wants to get his name back in there. After losing to Sean, uh, you know, Sugar Sean, uh, you hear a little while back, what was that? Um, I can't think of what event that was, but two, not not long ago. I'm, I'm sure I could probably... I'm, I'm, I'm sure I can pull it up was here it pretty quick. Was it in the 90s quick. or was it in the 80s? It might have been in the 290s. Um, I, was it like 292, 293? 292, yeah, yeah you're right, 292. 293. Yeah, against Sean, Sean O'Malley. Uh, Sugar Sean ends up winning that one mm-hmm. very quickly, too. Yeah, that was uh, you know, Second round, about 50 seconds in, yeah. ends up ta- taking that one, uh, knocks him out. Uh, just a, a phenomenal finish by Sugar Sean. We've seen what Sugar Sean's made of now. You know, and now defending that belt, but now Aljamain Sterling wants to get his name back in there. I think he wants the the, the chance to get that belt back and win mm-hmm. it. What better way than for him to fight another American uh, and Calvin Guitar, who is also on fire? Uh, he's he's a man that that wants this fight. I think he's ranked number eight right now in in his division. So uh, you know he's he's looking good. His last his last fight was a loss, but uh, you know looking at, looking at what he's made of and what he's able to do. He's sitting there at 23 and seven. Uh, he's, he's had a great career so far going against a guy again and Aljamain Sterling, who is going to go down as one of the greats. Oh, he, he's, he's a great fighter. And uh, this is, this is going to be a really fun one we're talking about prelims and we're bringing up these kind of names. This is, this is what makes this fight so exciting. That's the thing. You talk about these names and this is only a prelim fight. That's what mind boggles me. And then obviously we haven't even gotten to the main card yet. And we've said some of these big names, like obviously Calvin Guitar, and then like you said, Aljamain Sterling. Then even looking into like another fight that um, is going to be a really good one. Another heavy, this is going to be a heavyweight fight though. I'm like I said, well, not like I said, but like Josh well, said. Be- before you get to the heavy heavyweight, okay. um, with, with Calvin Guitar too, another thing I wanted to bring up is the fact that, so we've got Aljamain Sterling who lost to Sugar Sean, right. uh, you know, in a way that he absolutely didn't want to lose that, no. that fight. But I didn't think that he really came out there trying to defend defend himself the way that right. he should have. Uh, you've, you've, got, you've got to push, you know, push Sean back and keep him on the ground. He didn't really fight his fight. So he wants to bounce back and win. Calvin Guitar, on the other hand, he's lost a couple in a row. So I mean, he's he's a great fighter. He he knows he's a great fighter. The opponents that he's going against know that he's a great fighter. He's got to find himself in, in a, a the win column. Otherwise, so, he might be pushing himself out to bare knuckle fighting. That's the thing. I mean, if you can't if you get in that that streak to where you're getting in the into the loss column and you can't find your way out of it, it's a real real struggle to try and get your momentum and positivity back. I mean, Josh, you know as much as I do if. Even if you take an L at any kind of situation, it's so hard to try and get your mind out of that that situation and try and bounce back. But if you don't, this is really going to be a, 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 a struggle for you. And like you said, we might be seeing some bare-knuckle brawling later down the road. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah, well, now let's move forward to this heavyweight matchup that you're talking about. This is one I... This is one of the top ones for me. It's hard for me to rank which ones I, I'm most excited They're for. They're all even. <laughs> but, yeah, this this one is definitely going to be a very fun one uh, overall. I mean, it's it's a couple of fighters that if you haven't heard their name, you're going to know their name. Uh, so, uh, first, Yuri uh, Prokaska, a ch- Czech boy who is just lights out. He is a tough fighter. If you've watched any any of his last couple of Straight fights. dog. Absolute, yeah, absolute dog. Uh, this dude is is a monster in the octagon, uh, and he's going against Alexander Rakic, uh, Rakic, uh, I guess from Serbia. So you know, just seeing seeing, I mean, this one, I have a hard time not picking Prokaska. Uh, so you look at his last, go go back a couple of fights against uh, Tachera. That one was an absolute brawl. Both fighters going going li- lights out. Uh, if you haven't watched that fight. That's what you're going to see out of out of Yuri Prohaska. Uh, th- that's that's the fighter that you're going to see, an absolute monster. 
His last fight going against Alex Pereira, uh, he ends up losing. But this is a dude. I mean, it's it's Alex Pereira we're talking about, uh, who happens to be on the main event. But still, I, I I saw a lot of great things out of Yuri Prohaska out of that one. I think he wants to redeem himself, get it, get himself back in the win column. He's he's definitely got a chance to go back for the title against uh, Alex Pereira one more time. Without a doubt, uh, and and I think it's going to be a different fight the next time that we see him against Pereira. Uh, he's he's an animal. I think he wants that that fight, and he knows how to take a beating. He also knows knows how to deliver it. Th- this is definitely a fight that I'm very excited for uh, between Yuri Prohaska uh, and and Alexander Rakic. If you just even look at Yuri and think that I could beat this guy up, you're heavily heavily mistaken i mean just as a just his appearance and everything that he brings into the octagon and i would i would crap my pants and walk out so fast that you wouldn't even catch a catch a smell i mean he being only at 31 years old too and just being able to see his fighting ability and how much he can he can hold the stamina and know when to strike at the right moments is what truly baffles me about how he can fight and i mean You've obviously seen his fight, Josh. He's also that technical kind of guy to where he's not afraid to to get dirty into the technical side of things, but we obviously seen how hard his punches have obviously landed on people and how much that they're able to bring to the table, especially for for Rakage. He's got his work cut out for him because this is for not sure. a this is not a this is not an easy fight to fight against somebody. I mean, you're definitely going to be battling for the countries here, but, I mean, still, obviously looking at 31, 32-year-old males, then the the thing is the reach is morally favored towards Yuri by two inches, One, him being at 80 and the other guy being at 78. That's going to be also another little bitty thing that helps getting into those type of situations to where you try and get that reach factor. But still, overall, this is going to be an unbelievable fight. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I think Yuri is so much fun to watch. If you don't know who he is, go back and, like I said, go back and watch that watch one against Teixeira where he wins that one because Teixeira is a monster himself. It's two huge dudes just battling it out, and, and it was a bloody match. It was disgusting how much they beat each other up Mm -hmm. and that's the kind of fights i like um speaking of fights that i like uh coming forward we've got bo nickel going against cody brundage bo nickel is a guy that you may not have heard of because he's pretty new when it comes to just overall professional fighting only five and oh professional record i'm pretty sure we've only seen him once in the ufc before Uh, i didn't do my research on that but that was against val woodburn this is back around 290 whenever Volkanovski fought. Uh, and, and so, you know, this is, uh, he, he ended up beating Val Woodburn and just dominating him. First round to only took him 38 seconds to finish him off. Uh, it was an absolute, just cr- crazy win. Uh, going back before his professional fighting record, you know, before his, his uh, career started, before uh, his, his professional career, he was a, a wrestler. And he's a, a, a big time wrestler in at Penn State. Uh, this is a dude that he is a wrestler, but he can swing his fists, and and we saw that. We he's got a lot of power behind his fists, and we saw that against Woodburn. Uh, this is a fight, man. When, when I when I look at it, I would think that Cody Brundage would be the favorite, but instead, Bo Nickel is a minus twenty one hundred favorite. That's kind of crazy to me because Cody Brundage, he's been in, around, you know, mixed martial arts a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah. Uh, and he's a good fighter too. Cody Brundage is another very tough fighter. Uh, his last couple, he's won, and he's won against some pretty good opponents. Mm-hmm. So looking at this one, I'm very shocked that it's not flipped the other way around because you've got a guy that's pretty new to the UFC against a guy that's been around a couple of times. And it's going to be a very fun fight. I think the the odds with with Cody Brundage being a plus eleven hundred underdog, I think that's totally misconstrued. It's, misconstrued. it's 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 yeah. yeah, it's totally way out there. Uh, yeah. I I think this is going to be a much closer fight than that because you're going to have a couple of very tough dudes getting in there uh, in a middleweight bout that is going to be very fun to watch. Without a doubt. I mean, once you first told me those odds, I looked at you and I thought you're kidding me, right? <laughs> 
Like, did they accidentally add in another zero? Did they misprint something or mistype something? I could totally understand that. Maybe like a minus 210 against a plus 110. Yeah, like, exactly. Sure, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. But 2100? I mean, I'm... I'm You're pretty. Me. I'm pretty close to putting my money on that plus That's 1100 for Cody like, Brendage, but I I do think Bo Nickel is going to win this fight. Yeah. So I wouldn't put my money on it, but it's going to be way closer than minus 2100 oh, odds, without a doubt. I mean, you get these people out to where you think, okay, I have this big of an odd favor or this bad of an odd favor against my fight. That just that just gives a sign to me. To where I want to go out and prove all those people that put that big of an odd favor against me and go out and prove them wrong and hopefully help out some people get some chunk of cheddar. But, I yeah. mean, that's a whole different story. But, I mean, it just completely mind-boggles me. But both are really good fighters, and both are just upcoming, obviously, in the UFC. And this is definitely going to be another good one, Josh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, looking at looking at this fight, I, it's... Like I said, I, I don't understand what the odd makers were doing, and that's know. that's kind of what's throwing me off. Because if I were to make the odds, may, make maybe it reasonable. Honestly, I would flip it the other way around. I maybe make Cody Brundage like a minus one fifty favorite, uh, and then like a you know plus one eighty or something like that maybe over 200. there. I don't know. It's it's very confusing. But going up to the next fight, Charles Oliveira uh, against. Uh, Around. Yeah, I, I can't remember how to say his name. Uh, Sario Khan or something like that. But anyways, yes. <laughs> I don't care what his name is because Charles Oliveira is going to win this one. Uh, if you want if you want a sure pick, that's a, a sure pick. Uh, it's not going to be great odds for you or nothing. Uh, so, uh, and, and by the way, I think this, is this one getting into the main uh, main card? Yes, this is. This is getting get into, yeah. Okay, card. so this is the. This is the second fight into the main card. So Bo Nickel, Cody Brandage starting this main card. Yep. Uh, so Char- Charles Oliveira, he's a, he's a beast. Uh, he he really is, and he's been getting himself back into the win column. Uh, so he has had thirty four wins. Uh, he's had twenty one of them by submission, ten of them by knockouts. That that's who what Charles Oliveira is. Uh, he's he's an absolute animal. I think this is a really fun one, um, but somehow, Armand Sario Khan, Sario Khan, I don't know how to say his name. Again, I don't really and, care. And uh, he's a great fighter, don't get me wrong. I, I, I have seen a couple of his fights, especially preparing for this and looking back. I, I don't see it, though. Not against Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is a, a, a monster. Uh, he's at a plus 185. You want another underdog pick? I'm picking Charles Oliveira to win this one. Uh, I don't. I don't know how exactly. I, I would. I would have to assume he's going to be able to use uh, that Brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and get him in some sort of submission. I think he wins this one pretty comfortably. I don't think it goes the distance. So I'm going to pick Charles Oliveira. You can pick it however you want. That's that's how I'm picking it. I'm picking the underdog here. If you don't pick the underdog here, I mean, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. If I M- maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the odds makers know what they're talking about. But I'm looking at a lot of these odds and I'm thinking. Charles Oliveira, to me, should be the, the favorite by quite a bit. You would think, at least. I mean, I don't know if they're holding back something that we don't know or whatever the situation is. I mean, Charles Oliveira, he's a D-A-W-G dog. And you would think, going into this fight, that I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but to me, if I was in, if, if I was in uh, Oliveira's mind, this is kind of like a, I wouldn't say an exhibition fight, but just something to where definitely, you're... definitely nothing like that. Uh, no, so no, So no, if but... you go back to the last fight for both of them, they actually both had the same fight. Yeah. Same, same guy. They uh, so uh, Saryu Khan, he might have had the better finish, um, but they both ended up uh, killing, killing uh, Daru, Daruish. Yeah. Uh, it was both of their last fights. Yeah. So in both of them, won, they both demolished, uh, but. Armand might have the better the better advantage when you take a look at that fight alone. I just know who Charles Oliveira is, and I know what he's capable of. I, I, I just feel like this is an underdog win. I Like I said, I'm sticking with the underdog in the situations. You get that underdog feeling, and I say that in quotation, underdog. I mean, that just makes you want to fight even more and prove even more people wrong and say, you can call me an underdog, but... Wait till I bark and bite, and then you can really say what you want to call me as an underdog in this situation, Josh. Yeah, definitely. But let's get to 
top three, three fights. These are these are the three fights I absolutely rank number one, two, and three. And I would probably just because I love Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, I would probably say that's number one. Uh, and then maybe go. Would you go Pereira man, that's, and that's Hill? tough. I'm gonna say Pereira Hill. I think that's the better fight. Um, but Zhang Wei Li, she is exciting to watch. So we're gonna start off here with the BMF title, though. We've got Justin Gaethje against Max Holloway, two guys that are going to go down in history as UFC legends. One hundred percent. Both of the, both of these guys are absolute animals. Both of these guys deserve this fight. So the BMF title, the baddest M- MFer. Uh, this started back between Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz. Jorge Mas- Masvidal ended up winning it. He never defended it. This is the first time in UFC history that this BMF title will be defended mm-hmm. by uh, Justin, Justin Gaethje, Gaethje himself. So that's that's something that's kind of exciting is that no one has ever had to protect this title before. This is just something that the fighters themselves love this title being, being out there. Uh, you know, seeing what is at stake. You know, it's just a pure bragging rights. Mm-hmm. That's all this is. It's bragging rights. It's not a it's not a division title. It's not a division belt that you're holding over your shoulder, but rather it's just the pure fact that you get to say I was the baddest M- mother effer out there. And that's exactly what these guys are going out there. Max Holloway by far the best boxer in UFC. Uh I I think he's the best boxer in the UFC possibly ever. He's an amazing boxer. Um, and, and, and you see what he's able to do with his hands. He's very quick. He's very decisive. He's precise. Uh, he he knows how to box. Justin Gaethje, on the other hand, is just a tough mother effer. <laughs> he is. He is just a tough dude. He's. I, go, you, you watch this fight, and you're going to understand why these two are in this title and why it's named what it is. Go back and watch the Jorge Masvidal uh, you know, against Nate Diaz and see those two. Uh, again, I, I, th- that's, you listen to what this this title is, that's the description mm-hmm. when you see guys like this. So, I mean, this is going to be really fun. Uh, this is the first defense of this this belt, and, and that's that's what makes it even more exciting. Uh, can Justin Gaethje keep a hold of it? it this is a very tough one it's for tough. me to pick. You've got Max Holloway. He's not known as much for his power, but he's known for his precision. Which, if you listen to to uh, to Conor McGregor, precision beats, beats power. power. Yeah. That's that's what he would tell you. But Justin Gaethje, on the other hand, he catches you once with that right hook. You're going to be seeing stars. So this is just one of those fights that you've got a couple of dudes that will be throwing haymakers back and forth at each other, and they will be trying to prove who the baddest mother effer is. Uh, and that's what makes this entire the entire title holding it as a title and, and now now having somebody to defend that belt makes it even more exciting this is if i didn't have to pick the main card fight for this this would easily be my my number one pick for this fight oh yeah for sure i'm i'm really looking forward to this one just to see mac holloway in the arena and like you said josh his boxing ability is truly remarkable if if you have that kind of a boxing ability you are Gifted, if I had to say, his quickness, ability to get those get those one twos and just start going at it, and everything that he's put into that effort, and obviously with how the training he's been put through, and he still finds ways to even get better. That's the thing. A lot of these fighters don't think that they can find a way to get to the next level, but of course you got to prove yourself wrong and try and find that way to get to the next level. But nothing going against Justin here. He's a He's a really skilled fighter, obviously. Well, that's the reason for, why he has for, this belt. For him to win this belt, too, he had to go through Dustin Poirier. Exactly. That's, that's, what, that's what we're talking about with this this guy. I, so going over to Max Holloway. So Justin Gaethje knocks out uh, hey, Dustin, oh, Dustin Poirier yeah. cold and then has enough energy to jump up and do a, a flat, flat backflip back flip. right off the, the top of the cage, Literally. lands it. I, just This dude is an animal. Uh, and, and he's one of those guys, too, that just doesn't look as no. as scary as he really is. Yeah, exactly. Max Holloway, on the other hand, he's a scary dude. And, and the, he, I saw an interview with him, and he said, I feel like I was born in the wrong era. <laughs> I feel like I should have been born back in the gladiator days because 
weight cuts and all that stuff, a gladiator doesn't step in and want to know, you know, who the other gladiator, uh, you know, how much he weighs. There's none of that. You go in there, and if you're the baddest M- MFer, then you're going to go in there and fight whoever's in front of you, regardless of their weight. He's not scared of anyone. That's what makes him so scary. But on the other hand, you've got to do it with the power that Justin Gaethje has. And and he's also a very smart fighter, too, Justin Gaethje. Is. Exactly. Um, and so that's that's what makes this one extremely, extremely fun to watch. I love Max Holloway. I have, I've loved watching the way that he fights. But I'm pulling for Justin, Justin Gaethje in this one. Really? I, I think he I think he wins this fight. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, between this, oh, these two. And, and it's hard for me to pick because I love Max Holloway. I just I think the the power that Justin Gaethje has, if he can if he can connect a couple of times, I think he can put put uh, Max Holloway back on his butt. My thing is, you you mentioned it earlier, the precision beats power. I think that gives Holloway the advantage here, in my opinion. Like nothing against Justin here. There there's a reason why this bell is called the BMF, and this is definitely going to be a reason. Who's going to be the baddest mother lover? You already know what I want to say, but I can't. And this is definitely going to be... I I really wish this could be the main card fight. I sincerely do, but... It deserves to be just not on this event. Well, yeah, exactly. I love the fact that it is in this event, though, making it this much bigger. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a fun one. Who, who do you got winning that one? <sighs> Who's going to come out holding that BMF belt? I... I want to be honest with you. I'm going Holloway here. This going is, Holloway. This is going to be a fun one. And he's going to be the he's going to be the new BMF. So Jeremy gives you an underdog pick at plus one thirty. Uh, that's it's pretty close odds though overall. Yeah, plus one thirty, really minus one fifty five right now is what it's sitting at. It's a fun one. I, a I, I think this is my favorite fight on the entire card. Without a doubt. When, when I when I dive into it, this is my favorite. I'm sticking with Justin Gaethje. I think he's the better fighter, the better rounded fighter. Uh, where Max Holloway, he's more of that stand-up kind of guy. So uh, if you can, if you can beat him in, in that stand-up fighting, go for it. Um, mm-hmm. It's 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 scary though well, for either of these guys stepping in the ring. They're not scared though. They're no, not scared one bit. That's what scary. that's what makes them deserving of making making this this uh, BMF title. Going over to the women's strawweight title bout. This is the second title belt that w- the title uh, fight that we're going to see, and this is the first time. In UFC history, that we're going to see two fighters of the Chinese uh, origin that will be fighting for a UFC title, that's big. Uh, and I think what's fun is, it, you know, the the fan favorite I think will be Zhang Weili, just because she's been in in the UFC a little longer, she's made her name known a little longer, she holds the title currently. Um, but I think it's going to be a really fun and fascinating to see which fighter the Chinese are going. To, fans are going to be rallying behind. Who's going? To, who are they going to be louder for? Uh, who are they going to be cheering for? Uh, in, and this is a really fun one. But when when I see Zhang Wei Li going against Yang Xionan, uh, this is going to be a really fun one because I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you can. I I, I think I know who's going to win. I don't know how you can go against Zhang Wei Li and think you can you can win, because she might be the baddest mf. -er. <laughs> I mean, she she swings her her fists with so much power. For a, especially when you talk about for a woman and, and the strawweight division, when you compare her against any other woman in that division, she's got the most power behind her her hands that I have I think I've ever seen from a woman, and she is tough. She can take a beating. Uh, the last time I I saw her fight, I can't remember who her last fight was. I can pull it up here real quick though. Uh, it was it was uh, I guess Lemos Amanda yeah, Lemos. Amanda Lemos. Yeah, because watching that one. That was 292, if I remember right, uh, backing up, because uh, that was the same one with with Sugar Sean, Sugar Sean and yep. uh, Aljamain Sterling. So this was she's a very tough woman. I I, I don't see her giving up her belt anytime soon. It's going to take a lot more than this fight uh, for me to pick against her. I think she wins this one. Uh, it's going to be really fun. So fun for the Chinese fans as well to be able to sit there and pick who are the, who they're going to uh, cheer for. I think Zay, Zhang Wei Li. She's the toughest. Uh, straw weight that I've I've seen out of that that women's straw weight division, uh, and so I I think she wins this one pretty comfortably though. I'm gonna tell you right now, even if I were to catch wind burn from a punch from Zhang Wei Li, <laughs> I would be on my butt knocked out, Cole, counting sheep. I mean, it, it truly goes to show you how much she's put into this, and it's gonna be a really really, it's gonna be a cool thing to see both females from Chinese 
going into this kind of a situation, and how could you not have it any better going into UFC 300? This is definitely something to where it's going to be monumental for both women and for UFC 300. Like I said, you, you do not want to mess with Zhang Wei Li. This is definitely a female that is, like I said, D-A-W-G dog. And, well, and, and so I pulled this up just to, to look back. It wasn't a f- decision against Amanda Lemos, but this is how easy the decision was for the judges when they look at the stats. Because okay. uh, I, I remember this fight. She she comes out with such firepower that you don't have time to react. You don't you have don't. time to swing. No. The total strike count. Zhang Wei Li, 296 which, if I remember correctly, too, like it was like the most, the most strikes to the head or something like that that Amanda Lemos had to take. So, two hundred ninety six total strikes to twenty nine for Amanda Lemos. That is how explosive wow. she is. She doesn't allow you to think. Um, she, Zhang Wei Li was a, also took her down uh, six times, uh, and then the only thing that Amanda Lemos had in that is that she tried to reverse around and try to get her in a submission. Didn't work either time. No. Um, you know, just the overall power and, and the speed, the the uh, overall stamina to be able to stay in there and keep on swinging the way that she does. It's it's going to be it's either going to be lights out or you're going to look like La- uh, Amanda Lemos at the end of that fight. <laughs> I think you're going to be looking like Amanda Lemos, to be honest with you. I mean, if you get even relatively close to that similar strike number, that it, that alone is unbelievable and un- unheard of. It's one thing to land like ninety to a hundred, even like ended up like a hundred and ten maybe for strikes. Then she just goes, pops off, gets over two hundred. That is a complete brain rattler alone. Besides everything else that she had to do and the encounter for the entire fight situation, but I mean, I think it's. I'm not trying to be biased or anything. I think it's going to be a, a unanimous decision for going. For, really, I think so. I, 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 I'm 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 looking at what Zhang Weili brings, but I mean her opponent, her opponent. Yeah, they're they're both very fighters. tough. They are, and they both deserve to be here. Without a doubt. Uh, and so I I think I think Zhang Weili wins this one, and I'm I'm going to say she gets a knockout in round three is what I want to call. Call. Uh, I just maybe she goes for a submission, but I'm going to call a knockout. Round three. I, I don't think you can withstand as much as Amanda Lemos did. That, yeah. that was a lot no. of blows, and that was an easy decision for the judges. Mm-hmm. But let's go ahead and jump into the main event. Uh, this is a really fun one when we talk about the, the, these two. You've got Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill, both dogs. And we just talked about Alex Pereira, his last fight going again against uh, Yuri Prohaska, a very tough fighter that he had to go against there. Ends up winning that one. Jamal Hill here recently went against Tachera, who uh, we talked about Yuri going against Tachera and, and, and uh, the bloodbath that one was. If you haven't been, been able to go back, uh, if you haven't been able to see this one, go back and watch the Jamal Hill against Tachera uh, and, and see that fight because that was another bloodbath between these two. Uh, Tachera and, and Jamal Hill were both lighting each other up. Uh, there was at one point where, and, and this picture has been going around leading up to this fight, where there's a picture where Jamal Hill his his trainer's pouring water on his head, and you just see blood running down in a stream. This dude is tough. This dude is extremely tough. He won that one by decision, a close fight because both fighters are extremely tough. Uh, Tatera is is got another guy that's going to go down in history as a, as a tough fighter. And Jamal Hill comes out with the the victory there. Now going for a title belt because he's on a four win streak, if I remember correctly, a four four fight win streak, and now going against Alex Pereira who is an absolute dog. He is, there's a reason why he's in this position. He's he's held his title for, uh, t- I think, two, two straight, straight title titles. matches now. Yep. So two two straight defense title title fights. Um, this is his, his third one. So he's going to be going against a very tough opponent. Uh, looking at the, the odds right now, very close. We brought this up before recording. Uh, Pereira, minus 130. Hill at plus 110. Very close. Mm-hmm. Hill has Jamal Hill has a shot here. I'm not saying he doesn't, but Alex Pereira is a very tough fighter, and I think he's just got the upper edge here. I think this one. I think the odds makers were very, very diligent Odd, in yeah. making the this these odds. I do think it's going to be a close fight. This one might go down to decision. I think so. I think the decision will lean towards Pereira. He's a tough dude. He's just got to defend his belt too. So I don't see him 
trying to swing for any knockouts, going down for submissions or anything like that. I think he's going to play play this one smart, end up coming out. Uh, you know, he's going to come out with a with a victory. Um, both fighters very hungry for the victory in this one, uh, making this one a very high stakes battle for the belt. That's the thing. If you get into this kind of a situation where you've been holding on for that belt for that long, you know any person that's going to get the opportunity to is going to try and do anything that they physically can to try and defeat all odds and be the new champion of that of that belt. But I I agree with you. Pereira here, he is he's an animal when it comes into the octagon. I I wouldn't be surprised either, Josh, if this gets picked by unanimous decision, just because I think both of these fighters are easily going to go the distance. And I agree with you as well. I don't see I don't see Pereira trying to trying to launch a Superman punch and get him on the first connection here. But He's definitely going to – I'm not saying he's going to play, be playing full conservative here, but he's definitely going to be obviously given 110%. And plus, also, like we mentioned at the top of the show, having that much extra chunk of change, I think this is definitely going to be something to where it's going to be a dogfight, but it's also going to be really conservative for both fighters in this type of a situation because it's definitely going to be a really, really close one, but this is definitely going to be – the last time that we we've seen Alex Pereira lose was when he fought a middleweight title bout, trying to get a second title, uh, going going against uh, Israel Adesanya. Yeah. Uh, or I guess this was this was his his other title that he had. So he held this this title, lost to Israel Adesanya. Okay. Uh, this is back in two eighty seven. Wow. So th- that was the last time that we've seen him lose, and it was also against Israel Adesanya. Mm-hmm. Another legend of the sport, without a doubt, uh, and and seeing how tough he is, uh, I I have it pulled. Uh, I have it on my phone too. I have it saved because I saw this and was I just thought it was crazy to to just prove how great Israel Adesanya is. Okay, so his entire pro combat sports record. This is not just UFC overall. One hundred and four and nine. One hundred four wins, nine losses. Wow. That's how good Israel Adesanya is. He ended up losing to him uh, second round TKO late in the round two. So uh, that's the last time that we saw Alex Pereira lose. But again, it was against a very explosive, exciting fighter in Israel Adesanya. Without a doubt. I mean, you bring up that kind of a record, that is monumental. And I, I imagine he's going to have the next shot at the belt uh, against going against, uh, who was it, uh, Drakus Drake's, Duplessis. Yep, yeah, DDP. I mean, this is definitely going to be a situation if you get into that kind of a caliper and you keep the momentum rolling and the ball going in that kind of a mindset, you, for you, the sky's the limit here. You got to keep that, that positivity mind and just let everything out there. And don't be afraid to try and do anything that you're normally not used to doing and make you feel uncomfortable. But when it comes down to the end of it, you got to do what you got to do to get that title. And you're definitely not going to be getting it just hands-free and here you go, here's the title, go have fun with it. But this this is obviously being the main card, this is why it's the main card, just because you can't predict who's going to be walking out with this if we're going to have a have another champion or if the defending champion is just going to be walking back home with that belt right around his waist or his shoulder. Just This is going to be a dogfight to the end. It is a hard decision. I'm taking Alex Pereira. Uh, he's sitting there at minus 130 when I'm looking at it right now. Um, I, I think Alex Pereira is just the better fighter overall. Uh, I think he's a tough dude. Jamal Hill, no joke, though. No. What do you got in your, your decision? <sighs> Jamal Hill is no joke. Like you just said, he's he's an animal here. But as much as I want to go with him, I got to stick with Pereira here. This is this is definitely a situation I was, I was really contemplating back and forth right before we went on the air here. But... I gotta give my I gotta give the devil his due and I gotta give it to Pereira. I think he's just gonna keep walking and he's gonna keep he's gonna keep shining and he's just gonna keep showing why he's the champ here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be in a stacked card. All the names that we just listed off, I mean, how can you not tune in to UFC three hundred? This is going to be a historic fight night, to say the least. Looking at it again, Dana White is the best, absolute best commissioner in all of sports. Uh, I absolutely love what he did here with this fight night. It is going to be extremely exciting. Make sure to tune in. We thank you all very much for tuning in here. If you're watching on on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button up as well. 
uh, blow that up and help us reach our goal there. I don't know what that goal is, but our goal is just a million. So help us reach that. Um, we thank you all so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us over there. And uh, obviously, as always, go follow us on social media. We're on X, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun jazz. So go show us some love over there. We thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, have have yourself an exciting UFC 300 and enjoy the show. It's going to be a fun one, but we'll catch you all next time.